Hey everyone, my name is Sean Cecil from the Oculus Institute and today I'm going to talk to you guys about empaths and narcissists. Okay, so this is kind of an odd video for me to make because, you know, most of what I do is about career stuff and I happened to, as I worked with a lot of people, I happened to come across a lot of people who said, oh, I'm an empath. And so I made a video about, you know, what being an empath means, the different kinds and all this kind of stuff. And for whatever reason, that ended up being my most popular video by far. So I decided, okay, I'm going to make another one. And in this case, I want to talk about um, empaths and narcissists because a lot of people who say they're empaths, they talk about this dynamic with, you know, these so-called narcissists. And, you know, this could be a boss or, you know, a relationship or whatever. Um, for the purposes of career stuff, probably best if you think about it in terms of a boss. But I just want to talk about the, the kind of the narrative that's out there, right, as well as um, why I, that's, that narrative really isn't the best way to think about it and, and where you should go instead. So many, many people who will say, oh, I'm an empath, right, and there are these, these villains out there, these narcissists who take advantage of me and they take advantage of empaths and there's this war between these evil narcissists who take advantage of these innocent empaths. And the narcissists are, are selfish and they gaslight and they you manipulate and they do all these horrible things and the empaths just sit there and are just victims and blah, 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 blah. Now, there are, I'm sure I'm oversimplifying it a little bit, but that is kind of the general dynamic that I've seen in a lot of these comment threads, especially on that prior video that I mentioned. And I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna come straight out and say that that's just not the right way of looking at things. For one uh, is many times the reason that empaths are, first of all, the term empath is normally misused. And when people say they're an empath, what they normally mean is that they are a highly sensitive person. Right? An empath is somebody who feels the emotions of other people, good and positive, a highly sensitive person is somebody who has um, series of triggers normally coming from a difficult childhood, normally manifesting in low self-esteem, uh, normally manifesting in being very sensitive to other people's negativity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, these empaths, which are really normally highly sensitive people, um, th to say that other people are triggering you or making you feel a certain way um, or, or gaslighting you or whatever uh, kind of obscures responsibility because in reality everybody is responsible for their own emotions, right? And if you have a lot of baggage, if you're highly sensitive, that is stuff that you can process that baggage. You can, you know, rewire your triggers or unwire your triggers you can learn to manage your emotions and sensitivity in a way that other people don't do that kind of damage to you. And if you are truly in a relationship, whether that be professional or romantic, with somebody who is dishonest, right? Gaslighting is basically dishonesty, or who does not give you proper account of your values and your worth, then the solution is to leave that situation. Right? It's not to stay there and, and people say, oh, well, you know, narcissists do this thing and they manipulate us and blah, 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 and just staying. But in reality, the reason that most highly sensitive people stay in those situations is because they do not have a high degree of self-worth. They are afraid of being alone. They are afraid of venturing beyond the status quo. And it's ultimately their fear and their baggage and their emotions that keep them trapped, not somebody else. You are responsible for your own emotions. You're also responsible for your own decisions. While it may be tempting to abandon that responsibility and to put the blame on somebody else, that's not going to empower you to actually make the changes in your life that you want to make. The other problem with this, you know, empath, narcissist dynamic thing is that it, it, it dehumanizes the so-called narcissist. And in reality, we are all messy humans trying to get through this life. And some of us are happier than others. Some of us have done more work than others. Um, some of us may have more external success than others, but we all have our challenges, right? And if somebody's behaving in a way that is not appropriate, if somebody's being dishonest, if somebody's you know, operating from that place of darkness, it's because they are operating from darkness with inside themselves, right? They, they are hurt. It is hurt people who then hurt other people. There's a human in there too, every one of us, right? 
and and they're not some evil villain, right? They're somebody who is also a victim. They may be doing something that's wrong right now, but that doesn't mean they're a villain in their essence. They very often have been hurt too. And one way that you can see this is that you can see people who are, you know, quote unquote empaths, which really are mean highly sensitive people, um, who are actually covert narcissists themselves. They are so focused on themselves and so focused on their pain and so focused on their challenges that they actually don't really think of other people that much. Or they may on the surface level try to uh, fix other people's problems and try to people please, but because they're so stuck in their own mind and their own pain, they can't empathize with other people to actually know what those other people need. And so these surface level gestures actually aren't really involved with other people. They aren't really taking care of what really needs to be taken care of. And, you know, in some cases, you'll even have people who will use that past trauma as emotional leverage and their sensitivity as emotional leverage to get other people to do what they want, which is, you know, the very same form of manipulation. And so it's not this clean dividing line, right, between the empaths and the narcissists. They cross paths because both of them have been victims and both of them have caused harm to other people because of unprocessed emotional baggage. And at the end of the day, rather than trying to draw battle lines, what's really, really going to help everybody the most is for you to look inside yourself and yes, it may hurt, and to find the things that, you know, find your triggers and to work to overcome them. And, you know, maybe that means seeing a therapist, maybe that means, you know, um, go, doing some spiritual work. I don't know what that means for you. Everybody's got their own path. Um, if you had difficult childhood, uh, the great book that I recommend is The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. Fantastic book on those kinds of things. Um, maybe go read it, right? You know, but do your own work. Be responsible for your own emotions. And if you're in an unhealthy environment with somebody who hasn't done the same, then leave, right? If that's a boss, go find a new job. If that's a romantic relationship, then go find somebody else or just be alone for a while. It's okay to be alone. There's nothing wrong with that. And at the end of the day, right, be responsible for your emotions, be responsible for your decisions, be responsible for the environment you put yourself in, and don't pass that blame off to anyone else. Before you go, I've got a free gift for you. So if you found this video valuable, if it helped you see the world in a new way, and you're interested in building a career that's gonna bring you both personal fulfillment and financial prosperity, then I've got a free presentation for you to help you do just that. So if you go to the link below, it's www.oculusinstitute.com slash workshop. That's www.oculusinstitute.com slash workshop. Um, then it'll take you to a registration for a free presentation. It's about 50 minutes long, that's five zero, and it's gonna give you the step-by-step -step process to building your dream career. See you there.